Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve island perimeter. So this is an easy problem, but I would say it's more of a medium problem in terms of difficulty. It's similar to a different graph problem called number of islands, and you may have solved that problem before. This problem is pretty similar, so we're given a grid and in this grid, we actually only have one island. So you can see this is like the water and this brown piece is the island. So we're guaranteed to have exactly one island. And the only thing we need to do is for this island, we need to find the perimeter, not the area, right? Counting the area would just be counting the number of cells, but we want the perimeter. So for example, this cell has a perimeter of three, right? This top or this left part, this top, and this right part. So let me just redraw it. So, and this center cell, it doesn't actually have a perimeter, right? Because it's not connected to any water. So this cell, we can't really count the perimeter, but take a look at this cell. It has a perimeter of three, the top, the left, and the bottom, even though the left part is connected to the edge of the the edge of the entire uh, water, it still counts as a perimeter. So this perimeter is three. And so what you can basically tell, right, taking a look at this perimeter, we're really just counting the parts that are connected to water, right? What connected to water or connected to the entire boundary, right? Like this part is connected to the boundary, so that counts as a perimeter. And this part has a perimeter of two, right? The left and the right. Then you move down. This part has a perimeter of two as well. The bottom and the right. This part has a perimeter of three. And when you add all of that together, we get a sum of 16. So that's what our output is going to be. We just want to compute that perimeter and then return it. Now, if you've solved pretty much any other graph problem before, you can tell that this problem is gonna require a graph algorithm. You can do it with depth first search or breadth first search. I'm gonna choose to do depth first search because it's usually more simple. And so that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna do the depth first search algorithm, right? So you probably saw that coming if you've solved a graph problem before. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're, we can basically start at any of the cells, right? Let's just start at this cell for convenience, right? What we need to do is we need to visit every single land portion of this graph, right? But that's not enough. We need to somehow find the perimeter of it. How are we going to do that? Well, let's just look at it. So starting here, let's go in all four directions, right? Let's go above to the right to the bottom and to the left and see which one of these neighbors happens to be land as well. So first let's go up here. This is clearly land, right? So this is one of the other cells of our island. So from here, let's also go in four directions. Let's go to the right, let's go above, let's go to the left, and let's go down here to the bottom, right? But we know we already visited this bottom cell, right? That's where we came from. So we don't need to visit it again. How am I gonna keep track of that? Well, I'm gonna create a set. You could do an array, and I'm gonna call it visit, right? It's gonna be a set, and inside of that set, I'm gonna keep track of every single position that we visited right so the coordinates of this could be i and j right so for every position like this position i'm going to take the coordinates and put it into our set so so i'm going to do something like this right visit i'm going to add to it the i and j the coordinates of all cells that we visited before that's going to help us when i actually write the code but from here you can tell that we only need to go in three directions now from this cell right so so when we go above, what are we going to find? We're going to find that this is out of bounds. We can't go there, so therefore there's no land over here, right? So since there's no land over here, doesn't that mean that this is technically a boundary? Doesn't that technically mean that this is going to be part of the perimeter, right? Because if there was another cell here that happened to be land, then we could not count this as the perimeter, right? But since there's nothing here, there's no water, there's no land, there's nothing, this counts as a perimeter. So when I make a recursive call up here in our depth first search function, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return one. I'm going to return one because that's going to be that one is going to be added to our total perimeter. So 
let's keep track of our perimeter. So let's add one to it. Right now our perimeter is going to be one. We just counted this portion. Now let's make a recursive debt first search call to the right. Now I find that this is water. If it was actually land, I would not be able to count this as a perimeter, but there's nothing here. This is water. So I'm going to count this as the perimeter again. So I'm going to add one to our perimeter. And the exact same thing clearly is going to happen when we go to the left, right? So since there's nothing here, I'm going to return a one, add that to our perimeter. So now you may have noticed basically what we're going to be doing is a depth first search visiting every single cell in our island. And once we get to a, the base case, right, the base case is when we get out of bounds, we reach water or we literally reach the edge of our grid. Then the base case is basically going to be return one, right? Basically, we can add that as part of our perimeter. And then once we've visited every single part of our island, we're going to take that sum for the perimeter and then return it, right? That's all we really need to do. So just to show you a little bit of what's gonna happen next is, okay, so we visited that part. Now let's go over to the right over here. Right, so in this position, now we're gonna do depth first search again. Now we can't go back there because we've already visited it. We can go down, right, and up, right? And each of those is gonna be the base case. So we're gonna return one plus two plus three, right? So let's just add a three. When we go left, the exact same thing is going to happen, right? From here, you know, in any of the three directions we're allowed to move in, we're going to reach the base case. We're going to end up returning one for each of them so we can add three to our perimeter again. Now, when we go down here, right, we have three directions to move. We can't go back up because that's where we came from. We can go left, which is the base case, right? So add one there. There's nothing over here. We go right. That's another base case. We add one and we can go down, right? Down is going to continue our debt first search. So really from this cell, we're going to be adding two. So let's add two to our perimeter. And now we have three directions to move in. We can't go back up. That's where we came from. We can go to the right. We can go down and we can go left. If we go right, we're going to reach the base case, add one to our perimeter. If we go down, we're also going to reach the base case, add one to our perimeter. So in total, we're going to add two, and then we can move left, which is going to be the last cell that we need to visit in our island. Now from here, we have three directions to move in, up, left, and down, right? All three of those is going to reach the base case because there's no more island left for us to reach. So one plus two plus three is going to be added to our perimeter. You add all of these up. Three, three plus six plus four plus three. That's going to be 16. That's quick math for you. And so this is going to be the perimeter. We visited every single cell in our island, depth for search. We had a very simple base case. Now let me show you what that's going to look like in the code. So as I mentioned, we are going to need one data structure. I'm going to use a set, but you could use a 2D array. This is just going to tell us which cells of our island we already visited so we don't end up visiting a cell twice. Now I'm also going to create a depth for search function. I'm going to put this function inside of another function so it's going to be easy. We don't have to pass in every single parameter to every single function call. We don't have to pass in visit into the function. The only parameters we pass in are the coordinates of the cell that we're visiting. So remember the main base case we have to worry about is if we're out of bounds, right? So if I was greater than or equal to the length of the grid, basically the number of rows, or if J was greater than or equal to the number of columns, so if either of these are true, then we're out of bounds. There's a few more cases we have to check. So if I is less than zero, we're out of bounds. Or if J is less than zero, that means we're also out of bounds of the grid. And the last thing we have to check is if the position we reached is inbound. So we check I and J. And so if this position happens to be equal to zero, that means we reached water. So in this grid, zero represents water, one represents land. So if any of this is true, that means we reached out of bounds or we reached water, which is the base case, right? So and we know in the base case, we can return one because that means we reached the perimeter of our island, right? And there's actually one other base case. So if the position that we reach is in visit, that means we're visiting a part of our island that we already visited before so that's the base case where we end up returning zero because we can't you know add to our perimeter if we're visiting a island cell that we already visited before 
But if neither of these base cases is true, that means we got to a grid cell and we can start adding to the perimeter. So basically we're gonna go in all four directions, right? So the first direction is gonna be I is the same and J is added one, right? We're moving to the right, I think, with that uh, call. And we're gonna basically call our depth for search four times, one for each direction, adding to our perimeter each time. So this direction is gonna be I plus one, J stays the same and a couple more directions. We also need to subtract. So this is, I think, gonna be the direction to the left, J subtracted by one, and I subtracted by one, J stays the same. So these are all four directions. We've totaled our perimeter now, right, with, well, at least recursively, right? We see depth for search, we're making a recursive call. And then all we need to do is return that perimeter. But actually one last thing I forgot is we need to make sure to add uh, I and J to our visit set. So visit set dot add I and J so that we don't end up visiting I and J multiple times when we're making this recursive call, right? We, you see we're making recursive calls. We don't wanna visit I and J multiple times. So now that we finished our depth first search function, the only thing left for us to do is call that depth first search function, right? So on I and J, but the thing about our island is Part of it could be water and part of it could be land. We need to find at least one cell in our island that is land and we're guaranteed to have a cell like that. So we just need to find it. So we technically need to iterate over the entire uh, or, or the entire grid potentially. So let's do that. So I and J, basically we're iterating over the entire 2D grid. And if we get to a position, so if grid of I and J is one or non-zero, right? Then we're going to call depth first search and we can return the result of the depth first search. And you can see that when we run this function, it does work and it's relatively efficient because this is a linear time algorithm. Linear meaning you see that we're only going to visit each cell in our grid once. And what's the size of the grid? It's going to be n times m, right? Because n is going to be the number of rows. M is gonna be the number of columns. This is gonna be the size of the grid. We're only visiting each position in the grid once or even twice, but that's still going to be linear. So the time complexity is gonna be big O of N times M. So this is the time complexity. This is a linear function, but the memory, the memory complexity is also going to be the same N times M because you see we have a visit set, right? So potentially we might add every single position in the grid to our visit set that takes up extra memory. So our memory and time complexity is going to be this big O N times M. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.